Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Fantasy Alarm MLB DFS podcast. What's going on, everybody? Happy Thursday, and welcome to another edition of the Quick Pitch MLB DFS podcast here at Fantasy Alarm. Um, I am James Grande. I am riding solo today as John and Pemba is currently in the air headed to the Fantasy Football Expo in Canton, Ohio, um, sponsored by Fantasy Alarm. So um, there will be plenty of content uh, from the Expo this weekend uh, if you are in the fantasy football space. Um, Please check out our NFL Draft Guide. It is free uh, currently over on Fantasy Alarm. Go to FantasyAlarm.com. Go to the NFL tab, which is right uh, at the top. Um, and click on the 2022 NFL Draft Guide. It is free this year. Absolutely free. Um, nothing beats that F-R-E-E 0.000 dollars zero cents. All that good stuff. Um, so make sure you check that out. Uh, John, I hope you're uh, joining, the, joining the expo along with Howard Bender and a bunch of other family members. But we are here to talk baseball today. Uh, we have a six-game main slate kicking off at 105 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, You may still be having your first cup of coffee if you're out there on the West Coast when this slate kicks off, Um, but six games over on DraftKings, FanDuel, Yahoo, Fantasy. Um, So let's get into it. No weather concerns, first and foremost. That is wonderful. Um, There is some wind blowing out in Detroit. Nothing significant. Um, There's going to be a very hot and humid day in Coors Field as well. Um, You know, not that that ballpark needs any more uh, help in terms of hitting, but here we are. Um, So solid weather today, but let's get into the slate. Uh, It's going to be a quick one again. It's just me. Um, Let's get into pitching. Dylan Cease at the top. We'll talk DraftKings and FanDuel pitching. Uh, Dylan Cease, Fran Bar Valdez, at the top of both slates and actually Merrill Kelly is the third arm on both slates as well. So, uh, we can group them all together, even though I think it's really not all that close. It's Dylan Cease and then the rest of the position. Dylan Cease has been, uh, pretty spectacular. I mean, we're talking about a guy who has allowed one earned run or fewer in five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11. I mean, I don't even know, 10, 10 straight starts. Um, it uh, May 24th uh, was the last time that he allowed more than, than one earned run. I mean, this is just an absolutely insane stretch. He's 8-1 and one over his last 10 games with a .75 ERA, um, 77 strikeouts and 59 innings over that span. Unbelievable. And, and the Royals aren't a team that necessarily strikes out all that much. But it doesn't matter right now um even the royals honestly over the last 30 days 13th in strikeout rate against right-handed pitching so there is some upside here for cease i think he's the clear one uh the clear sp1 on today's slate frambar valdez in a good spot as well uh, mr reliable going to get you double digit fantasy points regardless uh he's going to pitch you give you at least six innings he's gonna get you a quality start and he's gonna get you double digit fantasy points uh and he's going to get the other team to beat the ball into the ground. That's just what he does. That's his MO. Um, and we know the Astros, you know, score a bunch of runs. So uh, I like Valdez as a as a play off of Cease, even though, you know, in my cash lineups, I'm going to be prioritizing Cease. Um, Merrill, it's interesting to see Merrill Kelly at this price. Not that he doesn't deserve it uh, because he's been quite good. I mean, we're talking about a span of seven straight starts of two earned runs or less and six plus innings or more um in each of these starts for kelly only one of those seven starts two of those starts rather uh less than five strikeouts so kelly's really put it together another guy who who gets a lot of ground ball outs um you know hasn't always been fortunate in the win category but 10 and 5 on the year uh you don't necessarily think merrill kelly is a 10k pitcher especially over on vandal but here we are uh, against a you know, Pirates offense that strikes out a bunch currently against right-handed pitching, 24.8% K rate over the last 30 days. Super appealing. Um, you know, if you want to go Merrill Kelly as a contrarian play, by all means. Uh, Edward Cabrera is going to be popular. Um, everyone's darling starter from the Marlins. Um, you know, they just have a farm full of just arm after arm after arm coming up from the 
from the minor leagues that just are uber talented. Cabrera already in four starts this year, three uh, he's looked tremendous. He's gotten 20 fantasy points. One, you know, not so good start in Houston, um, but his debut was six scoreless innings in Coors Field. He then pitched in Wrigley, five scoreless his last time out. Um, the pitch count should be back up over 70 through 78 last time. He should be in the 80s here. I think Cabrera is fine for tournaments. Scary offense. Um, you know, Kyle Gibson, really great start his last time out. Not going to be a high strikeout guy. Needs a win, I would say, for his upside to really shine through. Um, but he's on the board. He's in play. Uh, Brew Baker's been okay. You can go there if you want. I, I don't have much interest um, in Brew Baker. Not going to touch uh, Herman Marquez at home. Uh, this year at home, 611 ERA, 14 home runs compared to 407 ERA on the road, six home runs. So uh, just not it, especially with St. Louis offense scoring um, nine runs on on, a, on Wednesday evening. Zach Plesek also been bad, uh, very, very bad lately. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to go here. I understand, I guess, why somebody would. He's been good against Detroit this year, 3-7-2 ERA in two meetings, um, including his last start. I mean, his last start, he got kind of hit around. Didn't even make it out of the fourth inning. Um, I'm not really in on Plesek here either. Uh, on the flip side of that game, Garrett Hill. Uh, five and two thirds innings. His last start, six strikeouts. Not that he hasn't flashed like a lot of upside, but he's made two good starts this year. One of them was against Cleveland. Um, Cleveland, not a team exact that strikes out all that much. I mean, against right-handed pitching over the last month, Cleveland literally dead last in strikeout rate. So probably not going to go to Hill. Um, not going to, pl- I don't play Zach Granke. Um, you know, shout out P. Cole. I know you do, especially when he's home and he's been, ho- he's been good at home this year, but there's just limited upside with Granke. Um, just, yeah, I can't do it. Dakota Hudson. No, thanks in cores. Absolutely. No, thanks. And then Cole Reagan's, I mean, you know, was very good in his debut lefty against houston though houston over the last month ninth in ops um they are third in isolated power that's super scary they are 10th in woba but they just don't strike out 16 percent k rate to lefties over the last month um probably can't go reagan's so for me, it's really Cease, Valdez, Merrill Kelly. You could play Edward Cabrera, Kyle Gibson. I think they're both fine. And the value tier is just horrible. Um, I guess Reagan's would be the the one dart that I would I would throw out there. And honestly, it's same goes for Fanduel. Um, Gibson at nine K, you know. Um, Reagan's at 72 allows you to probably get more cores on Fandle. So, um, yeah, I think that's it for me. Gibson 9k and then maybe a shot on Reagan's, but like, you know, you're tense. You're the, every pitch he throws, you're just, ten, your whole body is tense and, um, it's, it's not going to be great. Um, let's go over to catcher we're on a six game slate. I know we're not going to spend a lot of time here. Um, you know, the the Royals catchers have been good, but do we really want to attack Dylan Cease? I guess if you want to be contrarian, by all means. But, you know, I don't think we need to be that contrarian. Dylan Cease hasn't allowed one earned run. Or, you know, that, that run is going to obviously end. But we've probably said that a couple times this year, and look at it, it's still going. Um, Carson Kelly is a guy that I play a lot. He's struggling a little bit, and he's been better against lefties, so you don't have to go there. Um, we might see... Uh, Dom Nunez, not even on the team anymore. I don't know why they have him here. Um, it's been, yeah. Um, Grandal has been bad. He was good on Wednesday at two hits and a walk. If you want to go there, I think all the the cores catchers are in play. Um, with Elias Diaz leaving last night's game, we probably see Brian Servin start here. 
Uh, Brian Servin just a couple starts ago had three hits in a game, so if you want to go there. Um, but if Yachty's in the lineup, Yachty's going to be your chalk. Uh, two hits in RBI on Wednesday night. One of them uh, should have been an extra base hit, but Yachty just doesn't run. Uh, it doesn't even care to run, honestly. Um, hit the wall. <laughs> just trots, trots into first with a single. So, um, yeah, I think Yachty's going to be the chalk 2K. Right, and if Andrew Kinzer is starting 2.4K, um, whatever catcher draws a start in this game, um, they're appealing. I think that's it um, until we get lineups. Um, until we get lineups, I don't think we really need to get crazy at the position, I guess. Uh, if you want to play Eric Haas, that's fine. And if you want to play in a stack, because we mentioned um, please sacks when bad. So if you want to play Eric Haas, that's fine too. Uh, first baseman, Paul Goldschmidt let everyone down. Uh, the optimal first baseman from the Cardinals last night was 2K Albert Pujols, uh, 40, which means if you saved $4,200 to go from Goldie to Pujols, that was the optimal strategy. Uh, so what will everyone do today? Um, we, we should go right back to the well with Goldschmidt. Uh, if you don't want to play Goldschmidt, go right to back to the well with CJ Crone, who had a, legged out a triple Last night, even though on that, even though he's on that bad hammy, um, and and what have we said about Crone? Throughout his career, he's been a lefty splits guy. This year, crushing righties, 305, 16 home runs, uh, 386 woba, and uh, Dakota Hudson's been worse against right-handed hitters himself. 299 average against 790 OPS, 346 woba. So um, we should be getting a pretty good uh, CJ Crone, and I think he'll probably be. Lesser owned of the two than him and Goldschmidt uh, for $1,200 less as well. So I'm down with CJ Krohn. Um, Jose Abreu, let's see if there's BB. I mean, they've probably faced each other 100 times. Th- four for 13 uh, for Jose Abreu against Zach Granke. You know, not bad. No home runs. Um, I mean, Granke's been tagged. You know, he, he, he's hit around. So if you want to go Abreu, that's fine. Uh, he's been he's been okay lately. Uh, 4900 worth, I don't know. Um, moving it down the list, Josh Naylor against Hill. That's in play. We love Naylor against righties. Christian Walker, you can play against JT Brubaker. Christian Walker driving in a lot of runs lately. 11 RBIs over his last 10 games. Um, 63 RBIs on the year. Christian Walker, uh, a candidate for maybe a hundred ribbies on the year. Uh, he's two for two off Brubaker with a home run in his career. Um, righties, 333 Woba, 750 OPS. Walker 309 well but 20 of his home runs have come against righties so uh, he hits better against lefties but the power shortage no such thing um, Trey Mancini was not in the lineup on Wednesday fully expect him to be back in the lineup on Thursday love him here again I, I liked Reagans but it was his first start and uh, Mancini had so much depth to this Houston lineup um, has notoriously hit lefties well Hard not to go there, 3700 if you're not spending up in cores. Um, can also play Yuli Gurriel, who's been hitting second, even though he's been just a shell of himself. So if you want to play Yuli, by all means. And then, uh, I mean, if Pool's in the lineup, <laughs> how can I? Four for five, home run, a double. He was a triple short of the cycle. I don't think Albert's going to be tri- legging out any triples this year. And zero on the year probably ends that way as well. But four for five, if he's hitting, hit fifth last night. And that's generally where they hit him against lefties. But, you know, if they play him again here, $2,000, he's going to be popular. So, you know, I, 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 I'm always going to pick Goldie. But $4,200 worth of savings, if you need it, it's obviously there for you. Second base, Jose Altuve at the top against a lefty. I mean, we don't have to dive too far into that. Altuve has been elite his entire career against lefties. This year, no different. Cattell Marte struggling a little bit. But if you're going Arizona stack against Brubaker, Brubaker has struggled against lefties. 350 Woba against him, 810 OPS. I don't hate that. Same with Rojas, who now has second base eligibility for whatever reason. Probably leads off here. Um... I think the the popular second baseman play is going to be Nolan Gorman, though. Uh, Nolan Gorman, not in the lineup Wednesday, will be back in the lineup on Thursday. The lefty-righty matchup here for Gorman um, against Herman Marquez. Gorman this year, let's check it. Gorman this year against 
Um, right-handed pitchers, 330 Woba, 12 home runs. Um, on the year, Nolan Gorman has 12 home runs. So all 12 home runs have come against righties. Um, Herman Marquez, 345 Woba to lefties. I mean, we already talked about how bad he's been at home. So I think Gorman's chalk, if you want to, you know, if Tommy Edmond cracks the lineup, stole a base last night, has three stolen bases over his last 10 games, you can, you know, probably play a lesser own Tommy Edmond, who also has short-step eligibility, but um, I, I still prefer Gorman. Andres Jimenez, just another, you know, clock in, clock out, just nine to five performance. I mean, two to f- two for four a run scored a stolen base. Second stolen base in three games. Has five stolen bases over his last ten. Uh, now up to thirteen stolen bases on the year. Hitting three oh six. I mean, the guy has just been tremendous. Um, so Andres Jimenez, forty three hundred. I think he fits perfectly in a Cleveland stack. Um, I mean, I'm not like fully in on Philly. If you want to go against Edward Cabrera, by all means, do so. Kevin Newman was really, really good on Wednesday. I know there's a lefty on the mound, but three for five and a stolen base. If you want to go to Kevin Newman, don't hate it, uh, if you, especially if he's leading off 3,100. I think that's it. I mean, again, it, like Merrill Kelly's been really good, but Tucapita Marcano, we've seen him lead off a couple times, has stolen base, has some power. You know, 2K. Third base, uh, everyone's favorite position. Jose Ramirez, perfectly fine if you want to play a, a Guardian stack. Um, Nolan Arenado coming off a big game in Coors. We know, you know how much he's loved Coors Field over the years, but uh, you know, probably actually having his best year of his career, and that's crazy considering he spent his career first what nine years in uh eight years in in Colorado. Um, Three for five last night, triple shy of the cycle, home runs in two of three. I mean, Arenado's on a different planet right now. Um, good matchup. Every, everything you'd want. Uh, unlike Alex Bregman, who can't hit lefties this year. Um, having a, just a down year altogether. Sub 800 OPS, 5K. I mean, you can do it in an Astro stack, but uh, I'm not playing him as a one off. I already mentioned Rojas can play McMahon. McMahon's been really good against righties, and he's been really good at home. Uh, he does all of his damage at home. 806 OPS in cores, 647 away from home. Um, and he does all his damage against righties as well. So uh, McMahon gets Dakota Hudson here. I think he's in a good spot. Alec Bohm, still too cheap, hitting third. You know, come back. he's come back to earth a little bit uh, from his torrid stretch, but in play. Brennan Donovan could crack the lineup here. He hasn't been playing a whole bunch uh, since the trade deadline, um, and since, you know, they recalled Paul DeYoung, and Paul DeYoung's been playing great, but if Brendan Donovan cracks the lineup 3,600, I don't hate it, um, in a left, lefty-righty spot. Aled Mestia is another, like Trey Mancini, didn't start last night, did get two at-bats still, uh, but he's been incredibly good lately. If you want to play Aled Mestia in this, in the righty-lefty split, um, Heimer Candelario been better against lefties, and he's been dreadful lately, but uh, 10 home runs this year, not too shabby, and uh, profiled at the top, uh, Plesak has been bad, 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 so I would go there, I'd also go um, Elihiris Montero, who had another two-hit game, that is now five straight two-hit games, he has uh, a nine-game hit streak as well, very hard to, to fade him at 2700 right now. Um, I really like this third base value. Uh, Emmanuel Rivera as well. He's been playing pretty much every day for Arizona. Uh, hit 2K, hitting 6th, 7th there in that range. So if you want to play that, I think that's fine. At the top of the shortstop position, Ahmed Rosario, I don't like paying 49 for him, but I guess there's been a small power surge from Rosario lately, three home runs over his last 10, six extra base hits over that span. So if you're playing a Guardian stack, I don't hate it. I don't hate a contrarian Tiger stack. I don't. And I know Javi Baez has done all his damage against lefties this year. This is, it's been a forgetful year for him and the Tigers in general. Um, I think there's a lot of excitement on the Tigers this year. They went out and spent a lot of money this offseason and it hasn't paid out. 
pay, or paid off rather. But Javi Baez, interesting spot against Plesac. Um Plesac stunk. Like, I, don't, I don't know what you want me to say. He's been bad. Um, lefties have been better, granted. Uh, 363 Woba, 830 OPS. But, you know, I, I, I could see myself getting to some some bias and getting to getting to some tigers um but if i'm not going bias you know you could play simeon against valdez i don't love it i don't love seager either uh jose iglesias just the guy has been incredible uh 415 um they're talking about it on the broadcast last night on the uh rockies broadcast i think he could challenge for the batting title um weirdly enough Hitting 277 at home, 358 on the road. Imagine that, uh, you know, there's some positive regression for him at home. I mean, we're talking about the best hitter's environment in the league. He's hitting 277. Um, hard to not just have Iglesias on your radar right now. I mean, even in a game where, you know, he doesn't homer, because he doesn't homer, three home runs on the air. I mean, 14 fantasy points, 15 last night. Um, really just double-digit fantasy points more often than not right now. So, uh, Glacius 42 in a matchup. He, you know, his hit righties better this year, and Dakota Hudson has struggled versus righties. Could be a match made in heaven. Uh, O'Neill Cruz, we know, power upside from the left side. Also speed potential. Um, Paul DeYoung is going to be very popular. And all Paul DeYoung does is hit for extra bases. I mean, the guy has 11 hits since being recalled, and nine of them are for extra bases. Uh, he has 21 hits on the year, 13 for extra bases. Uh, four for five last night, two doubles. He now has hits in three straight games, seven RBIs over his life. I mean, he's been really, really good since being recalled. And and this was the player he was in the minor leagues last year. Um, so I love DeYoung, 3,700. I think he's going to be very popular, as he should be because it's cores. Um, so if you want to fade him, you know, by all means do so. But I like the spot. Um, Rodolfo Castro for a cheap punt against Morel Kelly. Fine. Um, he's been up for two games. Fine. Let's finish this one off at the outfield position. Uh, Kyle Schwarber again tops the list. 6K. Look, three straight multi-hit games. Steven stole a base yesterday. He's stolen a couple bases lately. <sighs> you know, 34 home runs. There's always power upside, so... If you want to go there, you can. Jordan hits everybody. Finally showed some signs of life yesterday. Hit a home run for the Astros. Um, definitely can play Luis Robert. He's rolling right now. Another two-hit game for him. Um, hitting 441 with a 1235 OPS over his last 10 games. So you could definitely play Luis Robert. Blackman uh, should lead off here against Dakota Hudson. Ken Tyler O'Neill pretty much let let us down against uh Kyle Freeland and Co on Wednesday but you can run it back with him. Um Eloy's been good. Varsho for a cheap home run. Well, I guess mid-tier home run 4300. Uh when Kyle Tucker is going good, he is he is a very streaky player. Um hits in three straight starts extra base hits in three straight starts so when Kyle Tucker starts feeling it you could play him lefty righty split doesn't really matter um Stephen Kwan fit into your guardian stacks not a ton of upside but he you know he has stolen base potential Grishik after five for five goes 0 for five isn't that how the story goes so maybe we'll get somewhere in the middle here uh I don't hate Grishik Carlson like him better against lefties Brian Reynolds uh you know had a decent game for the Pirates on Wednesday. You can go back to the well there. Riley Green against Plesak. We talked about it. Lefties against Plesak is the play. Um, Riley Green should hit atop this order. Striking out a little too much, but 3,900 in a really good spot against a guy who doesn't really miss bats. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily hate it. Um, uh, let's see, let's see, um, Oscar Gonzalez, he is a good little player, didn't start Wednesday, but the two games prior had two hits in each, he's good, uh, Jake McCarthy, uh, Dimebacks led him off, I don't, and, you know, they've been leading R Rojas off, uh, 
when Rojas was in the lineup, but with Rojas out of the lineup on Wednesday, McCarthy let off. Didn't steal a base, didn't drive in any runs, but one for three runs scored, three straight games, seven fantasy points. Um, I don't expect him to lead off again, um, but I definitely think he's in play regardless with a righty on the mound. He's a stolen base threat every time he reaches, so uh, 3K, I don't mind it. Uh, going down the list here, uh, if Chaz McCormick cracks the lineup for Houston, if Sam Hilliard cracks the lineup for Colorado, is Sam Hilliard even on the team? Yeah, he's still on the team. Hitting 180, you know, you never know. Could be could be snipped sometimes. Lars Newtbar uh, is going to be very popular here. Um, very speedy kid. Had two triples and a stolen base on Wednesday. He's been hitting the ball really well. 333 average, 925 OPS over his last 10 games. Uh, if he gets on, he can steal. If he puts it in the gap, he can stretch it out to three bases. And he has a little pop, too. Um, so I think Lars Newtbar is going to be a core cash game play. Uh, you could definitely put him into your tournament lineups as well. Uh, $2,200 on DraftKings. Like, what, what more do you need? Um, and on FanDuel, just I just want to check what his price is on FanDuel because I doubt... I mean, $2,700. He's a core play on both sites in, in all formats. Um, JJ Bleeday, I mentioned this kid on Wednesday's podcast. Um, homered Tuesday, followed up encore three for three, double triples, home run shy of the cycle, RBI walk. Um, was in every winning lineup, 2,100 now. Yeah, I think Bleed A Newt, Newt Bar is a is a great way to get the likes of Jordan or Goldschmidt or Arenado into your lineup, you know? Um, especially if you're going Cease Fran Bar, Cease Merrill Kelly, or Cease, you know, Edward Cabrera. I think those um, those value plays at outfield are, are extremely valuable um, and uh, ones that I'm going to be taking a look at. Um, that'll do it. Uh, my home run call, actually. Home run call. So, can't go cores. Um, who do we got today? I will go... Probably go in that Cleveland-Detroit game. What lefties do we have? I didn't mention Harold Castro. He's in play from, from the left side for Detroit. Um, I will go... I'm going to go Javi Baez. Um, you know what? I'm going to go Riley Green to stick to the split. I'm going to go Riley Green home run call. Um, I think Green's going to have a big game here. So, yeah. Um, that'll do it. Again, um, six-game main slate on DraftKings Vandal kicking off at 1.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, check out all the content for today. P. Cole in the playbook. We have the value vault. We'll have the... Uh, the player prop articles for prize picks underdog fantasy um, we'll have uh everything you would need and plus don't forget uh nfl draft guide over on fantasyalarm.com is free dollars right now all the time for the rest of the season first time ever in fantasy alarm uh in fantasy alarms history that's been free so please check it out if you're playing fantasy football you do not want to miss it um, but big thanks everyone for listening. Uh, we'll get a podcast out for tomorrow. John, I'm, I'm not sure what his plans are. Maybe we'll have, uh, maybe I'll hit up Pete Cole, see if he can join. Maybe John will be on. I don't know, but there will be a podcast regardless. Uh, big thanks, um, as always, and, uh, we'll catch you guys tomorrow.